Today, we're going to be fixing all the biggest problems on the Civic. Previously, the Civic has left me stranded on the side of the highway and I had no way to get home other than hiring a tow truck. But in this video, we're going to be fixing all the problems, well, sort of. I got a big problem. Uh, this nub right here is literally rounded off. A lot of you guys have been saying it's been the TPS, bad O2 sensor, and I kind of dialed it down where I think it should be without having the check engine light because there's no check engine light on this car to figure out where it's coming from. Previously, when I got my clutch change that my dad told me to change the alternator a while back, I just never did. I'm crossing my fingers that hopefully when I change out this alternator, this should fix my, I guess my electrical issue because I feel like it's more on the electrical side when it comes to the Civic. This is what we're gonna plan on doing today is replacing this alternator as well as the Dizzy. I also wanna change out the Dizzy anyways because this is actually leaking. The internal gasket inside is leaking and instead of replacing it, we are just gonna replace the whole dang thing just to make sure that it's not the dizzy at all. I am gonna do one check. This might take the longest and I'm gonna check to see if it's actually on timing. I'm gonna have to take the pulley out. All right, so I got the alternator out. It's kind of dangling, but we got a big problem. Uh... This nub right here is literally rounded off. Because the bolt on the bracket for the alternator was completely rounded off, aka stripped, I'm gonna have to do it the hard way by taking out the manifold. Not a hard job, but the thing is it's very time consuming and oh my god, it's just a lot of labor. And while I was on the car, I made sure to check the engine to see if it was on time. That little red notch that's on the crank, it lines up just fine with the actual block. Basically, if that red mark doesn't line up with the block, then that means it's out of time. I just did this just to make sure that that wasn't the problem if it was off timing, because if it's off timing, it can misfire. It can do all kinds of problems. So just want to make sure. Jesus. Oh my God. I finally got it out. Jesus. If someone asked me to do an alternator on their car, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> the bolt on the bracket for the alternator was stripped. I couldn't take it out the easy way. And unfortunately I had to take it the hard way. But here it is, it's out. Now it's time to slap on this new one. Yeah, I'm, I'm never doing one of these again. All right guys, it's the nighttime. I've been at this for almost eight hours now. It's about to be almost nine hours. I put the brand new alternator in and plug everything back up. The green stuff you see, I put a new oil pressure sensor. Yeah, the old one was pretty bad. It's knocked off, but I don't think that should make the car run bad, but I just got one because it was already snapped before and the plug was barely holding on, so that's why I got a new one. I think I might have found the culprit. Let me show you guys. So here is my test pipe. There is literally something dangling in there. You could see that, I think this Thing is completely done for. I don't have a test pipe right now, so I'm just gonna have to make do. I'm gonna try to beat the filter out of the pipe and then hopefully cross my fingers. That is the issue, plus the alternator. It's already been whining already, so I knew it was an alternator problem. Took out the filter, should be hopefully good to go after that. During this time of the video, I was hoping to install my new Dizzy. The distributor that I bought was actually the wrong year, so. That's kind of an L on me. All right guys, so it's the next day and as you can see, I fixed some of the issues. The car runs 10 times better now and as you can see, no squealing for the most part. It does squeal a little bit and I think that's because the power steering belt is a little tight, so I might need to get a longer one, so that way it doesn't ruin the pulley. But other than that, as you can see, it idles just fine now. Also, because we installed the hybrid racing fuel pump, it is pushing more fuel than usual. So I use this fuel regulator to adjust it, and it's around 41 and a half. I know it's kind of blurry because the gauge is pretty bad, but it's about 41 and a half. Comment down below what I should put it as stock. I don't know really what to put in. It does have piston rods and then has a header and stuff like that. So I don't really know the range of where the fuel pressure regulator should be, but let me know in the comments down below. I just put it on the safe route, just 
41 and a half, 40 or so, uh, because before this car was reading about 50 PSI and that is just too much fuel injecting into the stock engine. This should do the trick and should slap this right on pretty easily. And actually the timing belt was too tight so I actually loosened it just a slight so now it doesn't make a noise anymore. Finally great to have a running car. This one technically runs but the problem is I can't close this door because the door lock is messed up so every time I try to close the door sometimes it's hard to even open back and up. I'm gonna check the timing one more time just to make sure it's in time. I definitely don't want to clap a valve or something like that and uh, we would definitely be done. So uh, we're gonna check this one more time. Better be safe. I'm sorry. Seems just fine. It seems like it's idly fine. No squeals or anything. Compared to last time, this thing was squealing like crazy. There is a small squeal in here, but I think that's actually coming from the exhaust because there's still some leftover filtering, I guess, into the test pipe. But other than that, I mean, it sounds just fine. It's way better than it was before for sure. I say thumbs up for me and it runs. This is Jarek from the future and unfortunately the alternator that I installed in this video is a bad one. It literally whined right away as soon as I started taking it on the road. Yeah, that, that just sucks. So probably return that and put the old one on because the whole time the noise was coming from was the super tight timing belt and then the super tight power steering belt and then the one main problem that really messed the civic all up was the clog cat yeah just oh my god i guess note to self don't buy catalytic converters from ebay <laughs>